still looking at little things that are making big differences. And uh, we have our dominoes up here again today. Today we're going to look at relationships. First Sunday the dominoes were in the shape of a cross. Last week they were in the shape of a heart. Today they're in the shape of a fish. Zechariah 8, verses 16 and 17 says this. These are the things which you should do. Speak the truth to one another. Judge with truth and judgment for peace in your gates. Also, let none of you devise evil in your heart against another. And do not love perjury, for all these are what I hate, declares the Lord. Having meaningful relationships can make big differences in how we live and how the person we're having a relationship with lives. Do you have a growing relationship with someone? Is your relationship a meaningful relationship that has positive encouragement to it? I don't think you can have a, a meaningful relationship with somebody unless you're encouraging them. Unless you're doing things that makes them feel good. And you know, having a meaningful relationship can't be just one-sided. It's got to be give and take on both sides. What we do is important. And if we are negative, if we grumble, if we complain, if we gossip, if we discourage other people, that can't help <laughs> help us have a meaningful relationship. And so those kinds of things we need to get rid of. Not have them as part of our relationships. You can have the uh, guys come up and uh, knock over the dog. dog the dog. This is uh, Jesse and Cameron's creation. sometimes. And so it's important, I think, that we have some checkups. You know, think about your automobile, for example. Uh, you have to do some regular maintenance where you're going to have a big problem, right? I mean, you've got to change the oil every so often. Uh, you've got to take it through the car wash, maybe. It's really dirty, like my truck is right now. <laughs> you, you have to uh, just fill up the fluids and uh, make sure the air pressure in the tires are, are right. All those little things, you see, makes it possible for you to keep moving on down the road. If you neglect those things, pretty soon you're going to be sitting along the side of the road, not making too much progress down the road. And it's the same way in meaningful relationships. A checkup, doing the small things, Seeing how you're doing can make a big difference in those relationships and how well they're doing. I want to suggest to you this morning three small things that can make a big difference in having meaningful relationships. The first one is going from burning to building. Going from burning to building. Now, I'm sure you've all heard about how much damage your tongue can do. You know, saying the wrong thing, saying too much, can make big differences. Our tongue is little, and yet it has great power. 
It has the power to really hurt someone, or it has the power to really help and encourage and lift up someone. Just depends on how we use it. Let me give you some scriptures about the tongue. First is Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And then Proverbs 12, 20, 12, 18. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And then Ephesians 4, 29. That no, no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear and then James 3, 6. And the tongue is a fire. The Ocean Christian Church is a ZTZ zone. Okay? That stands for Zero Tolerance Zone. Well, there's not room here for putting people down. There's not room here for negativity. There's not room here for saying bad things about people. So we're a ZTZ zone, zero tolerance zone for those kind of things. You know, we, we don't want to grumble, complain, say negative things. We want to be a church that's known for building up one another. And I hope we will continue to be that. You know, someone has said if you don't have anything good to say, then just don't say anything. Sometimes silence is the best thing we can say. Maybe you could send a note or an encouraging word or a text or something to somebody this week. I mean, if you, if, if Bill Pullen has blessed you that way, pass it on to somebody else. So you can either be a builder or a burner. Your choice. Second thing I want you to see this morning is it's a small thing, but yet it's so important. We need to be going from being served to serving. From being served to serving. Jesus said he came not to be served, but to serve. Mark 10, 45. And I'm sure we all have heard or seen John 13, where Jesus took a bowl and a towel and washed the disciples' feet. Because he was a servant. Jesus wants us to be servants. He wants us to be servants to one another. From the manger to the cross, Jesus' life was a life of service to other people. The benefits of serving others really is pretty important. Because when we serve other people, there's just a joy that comes. When you know you've done something good, built someone up that's encouraged someone. I, I really don't know how people who are negative all the time and cut people down can be happy. They can't have joy, the joy of Jesus in their lives because they're just so negative. When we serve other people, there's a joy in doing that. You know, some of the most discouraging times in my life, the best <coughs> medicine I had was go call on somebody. You know, uh, say something good about other people. And before you know it, you've lifted yourself because you've been serving someone else. As Christians, we should be serving. That's what the Lord expects of us. So, are you serving? What are you doing that's serving others? It's, it's you know, maybe, maybe a new Christian is somebody who we can serve. Maybe a new Christian is someone who, you know, accepts service. Because they haven't grown to the point where they understand they need to go out and serve others. But... There's not very many new Christians in here, I don't think. 
So we all, all, all ought to be out going serving and doing the service. In the home, you can offer to do chores for somebody else. You know, you can offer to do the dishes. You can offer to clean the toilet. You can offer to let somebody else control the remote for a little while. Uh, you know, those things. Small things make a big difference. Here's one for some of you teenagers. Instead of today, when you go home, calling shotgun, say, back seat. <laughs> Pick the back seat instead of shotgun. You know, do little things like that. They can make a big difference. Put on your thinking cap and see if you can't come up with some creative ways that serves others, that builds them up, that encourages. You know, I bet, you know, if some teenager said, Back seat today, your parents are probably going to be with <laughs> You know, when other people see you serving and being humble and taking the back seat, that, that's something that they, they're going to notice. Gives you the opportunity to be a witness without even saying anything sometimes. Can you imagine what the church would look like if? If everyone had a passion to serve, serve other people, instead of, what can I get out of this, saying, how can I be of service to you? You know, I'm sure you've all, all heard the Revive Indiana slogan, how can I pray for you? I think Goshen Christian Church needs to have a slogan that says, how can I serve you? Don't get me wrong, there are times where we need to be served. But I think the majority of the time, we are the ones that ought to be serving others. Instead of being served. Remember the story Jesus told about, he was, he was teaching people in a house, and all of a sudden there's a hole in the roof, and this guy on a stretcher comes down. How did he get there? He had four guys carry him there on that stretcher. Would you rather be the guy on the stretcher or one of the guys who's carrying it? Well, I suppose if you were needing healing, you'd be the guy on the stretcher. But you see, we don't know who those four guys were, yet they were serving the guy on the stretcher. You and I, we, we need to be carrying the stretcher for folks. We need to be helping them and getting them to Jesus. One of the real blessings a church can have is when people make a lifelong commitment to serve in the church and do what they can to build the church up. You know, it's, it's important also to serve in other organizations. And I'll tell you why. Because, you know, if you're serving in the church, that's great. And we need to do that. And that's probably the most important thing for the church to be able to grow how many people out in the world are going to see you if you're just serving in the church and that's it? You know, there are plenty of good organizations around that we can get involved in and serve and be a witness to. So that other people see that, you know, we, we just aren't confined to these walls here. We're, we're willing to go out and serve outside these walls and show Christ to people. So we need to do that too. But I think we have to be careful we don't just serve outside the church and never do anything in the church. There's got to be a balance there somewhere. It's important for non-believers to see that Christians care about them. So we need to get involved in other things too. Because that, in a sense, is serving the Lord, serving His church. <coughs> what will you do to step out and serve in your home, in the church, in the community. There are certainly ways that we can do that. And most of you probably already are doing that. So, we can build or we can burn. We can be served or we can serve. There's one more thing. And that's going from telling lies to telling the truth. <coughs> now, lately, the political uh, scene has been he lied and he lied and everybody's a liar, you know. 
Except for Hillary, she said she never lied. But... <laughs> That's probably a lie. <laughs> in the early 1980s, I, I was into running, and I did a lot of running. I did a lot of 5Ks mostly. Uh, I ran probably three times a week. And that continued until, you know, just a few years ago when I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, in 1986, I ran in the Little Indy 500, a mini marathon. I didn't do real well, but I did finish. In 1988, I, I ran in Indianapolis the, the thing they call Bop to the Top. The Indian, the, I don't know if it's still the Indiana Bank building then. It was back then, but maybe something else now. Bank One, I think that's what it is now. Maybe. 780 steps, 500 feet up. 500 feet down. So, that about didn't mean, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't make it. The reason I did it, uh, you know, uh, it was a fundraiser for Riley Hospital, and uh, I represented Clouds for Christ. <laughs> well, I remember 1980, the Boston Marathon. Not because I was in it. <laughs> I never have ran a month marathon. But I remember it because of what happened that year. There was a, a lady named Rosie Ruiz who won with the third fastest ever time of 2 hours, 31 minutes, and 56 seconds. However, after reviewing the checkpoint monitors, officials found out that Rosie had cut into the course, you know, uh, only a half a mile from the finish line. And Rosie had, she had qualified for the Boston Marathon by running the New York Marathon. Uh, she did start the finish line, started the start and finish line at the, at the New York uh, Marathon, but she took a subway <laughs> that, let, that took her to about a mile from the end of the finish line, and nobody caught her doing that one. Lying doesn't become us very well, and usually it is found out. And now everybody knows when they're going to be telling the truth. Speaking the truth in love, we will grow up in all things into Him who is the head, that is, Christ. Ephesians 4.15 And I like Proverbs 12, 19. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only for a moment. And then Proverbs 12, 22 says, The Lord detests lying lips, but He delights in those who tell the truth. Especially when we're dealing with non-Christians. We have to be telling the truth, because... They will see that, and that will make it very difficult for us to witness to them if they don't think we're telling them the truth. Telling the truth is not always popular, but it is always the right thing to do. Fudging the truth is a temptation we all have to deal with. You know, it's tax season, right? There's some things on there probably you won't don't want to really reveal, but you got to anyway, because that's telling the truth. Telling the, telling the truth is the cornerstone of really meaningful relationships. You know, if, if you have somebody you're trying to have a relationship and they keep lying to you, you're probably not going to continue the relationship, are you? Because it's hard to have a meaningful relationship with somebody who's not truthful. We need to establish in the church an atmosphere of honesty and truth. When we have a problem with someone, we shouldn't talk to everybody but that person. We ought to go to that person and talk to them first. And if that doesn't take care of the situation, then we need to, we need to practice Matthew 18, where you know we take somebody with us as a witness, 
And then if that doesn't work, we go before the whole congregation. But telling the truth is so important. Jesus, in fact, said, I am the truth. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Little movements can have big impacts on our lives, just like the dominoes, just hitting over one of them, knocking over one of them, like Cameron did, make a big difference in all the rest. Little movements make big impacts on our lives, on our homes, on our churches, and even on the world. But we've got to be willing to make that first move. You've got to be willing to knock over that first domino. You've got to be willing to make that small choice that can turn into a big difference. We must be willing to go from burning to building, from being served to serving. And last of all, we have to be willing to go from telling lies to telling truth. As we do these things, we're going to see big differences happen in ourselves, in the relationships we have with other people, in our home, in our church, and in our community, and in the world. What will you do to have a more meaningful relationship with people? I'm going to sing an invitation to him. It's an opportunity for you to make a decision. Decision to improve those meaningful relationships. It's, it's an opportunity for you to decide what you're going to do. And I hope you make a good decision about the world to make big differences. That decision, baby, which come as we stand. And <laughs>